we are going to deal with people that experience marital delays and everybody will have some kind of delay in their lives. And the question now will be like, why is it I've prayed and I've fasted, I've done everything I can do spiritually that I know to birth the kind of change I desire and why is it not happening? So the, this, this question is very significant because I feel the frustration when they say, Pastor, you don't know how frustrating this is. I've been praying about this marriage issue for the past 10 years. I'm exhausted. And you have a right to be exhausted because it's just been human. Some people say, I, I prayed about the contract and the contract just slipped through my hands and went to somebody else. I mean, th those things happen. Someone says, I didn't just pray. I fasted. You know, I made my confession and all of those kind of things. But there's something I've been dealing with here because in this specific teaching, this is why the turning point service is different. What I'm trying to do is to attack something that seems like a problem so that your prayers can be more effective, can be more eff efficient. A lady walked up to me, I mean, she might even be in the service, and began to explain to me that I think she's, a, she's almost in her late 80s, 30s, and said, this relationship thinks nothing seems to be working, relationship is not working, work is not working, and all those kind of things. Let me tell you something, eh? Every time someone tells me everything is not working, the first thing I don't recommend is prayer. The reason why is that, why is everything not working? I, it can't be the devil. Because I know you have been praying. So, sometimes people don't know that mountains or barriers are two foods. There's a spiritual orchestration, but there's also the mental orchestration. And I always say to people this way, everyone look at me. The easiest problems to deal with are problems that are purely spiritual. You know why? Demons are very submissive. You see, resist the devil, he will flee from you. The ones that are most difficult to deal with are the ones that have to do with mindset. Because they were not built in one day. It's so difficult to live in one day. Did you notice? Every time Jesus Christ came to a demon-possessed person, come out! Come out! Spirit of him, come out! The, man, the moment he met the man at the pool of Bethesda, that it was not only having a spiritual problem, his mindset was there. Jesus Christ said that, what do you want? He said, arise, take your bed. He said, no man. He began to argue with Jesus Christ. Thank God Jesus Christ had patience. All right, so one of the major reasons, so this is what happens. And all of you that run businesses, this is very symbolic to you also because you can apply the principles. All of you that have children, you can sit your children down and teach them the principles. And this is the principle. So when you see yourself pushing, so this is why you are praying, 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 it's not working. Because fundamentally, people are praying from a negative place. Let me show you a scripture. Job chapter, did I say chapter 3 or chapter 1? Let's read chapter 1 first. Chapter 1 verse 4. The Bible speaks of Job. And his sons went and feasted in the house. Everyone his day. And sent and called for their sisters to eat. And to drink with them. So there was just a lot of partying. Verse 5. And it was so when the days of feasting was over. That Job sent and sacrificed. And sorry sent. And sanctified them. Why did he sanctify them? He rose up in the morning. And offered bond offering. According to the number of them all. And Job said. What did he say? It may be nobody sinned, but just a mindset that these people can sin. It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job do continually. What does this mean? Job was always offering prayers. Job was always offering confessions. Job was always sowing sacrificial seed. Why? From a place of fear. Because it's not as if the son sinned. So he was always, he would always do, you know, be praying. Always offering from a place of fear. The sons or daughters did not sin, but he was afraid that if these people sin, something bad will happen to us. So you will see people that will come to church, they are involved in prayer from a place of fear. They are involved in um, this from a place of fear, from a place of negative mentality. That's what they are doing. And what Job did not realize is this. Did the sacrifice stop the evil? No. Why? Because fear and wrong mindset has the power to what? To paralyze spiritual laws. Look at chapter 3. So Job was always afraid. So because of afraid, because some of you, it's not as if you are prayerful, you are just very fearful. It's your prayer, it's your fear, it's your fear that leads you to a place of consistent prayer. You have that fear that you will never marry. You have that fear that everything that is going well will scatter. 
you have that fear, you will not have a happy marriage. Because of that, you go into prayer. And I've told you many times, true prayer is not based on fear. True prayer is based on faith. The fear in the prayer weakens the prayer. Look at this. Job chapter 3, verse 25. The Bible says this. This is what Job now said. For the thing I've greatly feared. So every time I was offering the offering, I was so a special seed. I'm just afraid that I don't want to be this. I, I just have fear. So because of fear and because I'm a Christian, I'm religious, I express. Why other people will express their fears in negative ways? I express my fears in spiritual activities. He said, that which I greatly feared is come upon me. That which I was afraid for is come to me. He says, I was not in safety neither had i rest he says when i was in safety i was i didn't have peace of mind he says this neither was i quiet yet trouble came i want to see something here there are people i mean a lady sent me a testimony and this is very powerful she said that pastor i'm pregnant why this is important that be mine for three years and i'm pregnant he said three years seem to be small but you must remember from when i was a child i've been having dreams that i will never have a, i'll never have a baby he said so before even i got pre married it was there that what? That having a child would be difficult for me. And there is a way that positions your mind. I'm saying to you because you're wondering why all the prayers, why all the fasting, why it's not working. The reason why is that it's based on fear. It's based on a negative mindset. So I'm saying to you that for you to change this, you need to change the fear into faith and the negative mindset into what? Into what? Positive mindset. That's why I told everyone here, and I'll give you the assignment again. Because if you don't do the assignment, it is, it's, listen to me, this thing works by application. If you don't do the assignment, I don't know what to say to you. This is what I do myself. This is what I do myself. I go into my, this is what I do. Everyone look up here. I stand here. Then in my thoughts, I stand outside myself. Then I begin to listen to how I talk to myself. I begin to listen to how I talk. You know why? When you stand outside your thought and listen to you, you'll be surprised the things you hear about yourself. Most of you have never done it before. It's just being conscious of what you're thinking. As you stand, you just say, hey, will I ever get married? Hey, can I go far? Everything will just crumble. I know I'm not good. And this is your inner... I want to listen to your inner conversation because those reflect your mindset. And those mindsets are the things that are killing your prayer and reducing its effectiveness. Are you here, somebody? Oh, my God. Your belief will limit the results of spiritual loss in your life that you want to see. Let me give, so I've given the example of Job. Look at the story of Naaman. Naaman was meant to dip himself seven times into the Jordan. What did he say? He said, I'm sorry I cannot. Why? He said, because I thought. You know, his thinking was colliding with God's instruction. His thinking was what? Colliding with God's instruction. He said, excuse me, that cannot happen because I thought. You will always attract the material equivalent of your thought life. Did you hear what I said? You will always attract the material equivalent of your thought life. If your thought life says you can't be a good mother, there's no way you can do it. You'll not be a good mother. You will always attract the material, when I say material, the physical equivalent of your thought. It does not matter if you are praying or not. You will always attract it. Bring the ball and, you know, Gerard, come. No, no, no. Um, yeah, come on, come on. Give him the ball. Give him the ball. Give him the ball. Why well, my guys that want to help me right now, they can see this. Tell me, I thought you would be here. You just move back. Put the ball on the floor. I, I, I don't want to kick it too fast because I wanted to be able to capture this moment. Kick the ball. Kick the ball. Um, what's easier for you now? Move back a little with the ball. No, no, with the ball. Kick the ball to the left slowly. To the left slowly. Kick it. To the left. Let's, let me say something to you. There's no amount of prayer that can make that ball go to the right. Once your thought moves you to the left, your prayer cannot correct it. 
this is what is happening. Take back the ball. Your ball is your life. You are the person kicking. This is your thought. This is your mindset. So, it kicks to the, kicks, kick to the left again. We keep praying. Father, don't let you go to the left. I want to go to the right. I want to go. See, it's not the prayer, sir. It's you, through the prayer, receiving power, to take the ball, take the ball again. This is what you do. You will take the ball. That's why I say you have to capture the thoughts. That's why St. Corinthians said every thought is captured. You have to capture the thoughts. You capture the thoughts. When you capture the thoughts, why? Why did they keep the ball to the right? That's the way it was programmed. I'll give an example. I grew up without people necessarily caring for me. I grew up by myself. So rejection was something that was very familiar to me. As I grew up, even though I had a lot of people that loved me, I experienced a certain level of rejection. And rejection, this is the power, eh? When you experience rejection, it doesn't mean to be right or wrong. Because everybody loved Michael Jackson, but Michael Jackson never felt the love. Yes or no? Everybody loved Winston Houston, but Winston Houston never felt the love. Yes or no? Exactly. So, it's not about reality. So, I had to begin to receive it. Because by default, I'll be kicking the ball to the left. But I had to change myself. And this is where the prayer comes in. Prayer gives you that ability to be able to take your life in your hands. The ball should not go where the ball wants to go. I want to kick. So kick the ball here right now. You know, I kick the ball. Look at this now. I kick the ball to the other direction. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Let's look at, let's look at Exodus chapter 3. Very powerful. I want to show you how God really does this. Exodus chapter 3 verse 2. We will jump the story. The Bible says this. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto Moses in a flame of fire. And out of the midst of the bush. Question. Before this time, did Moses know he was meant to deliver Israel? Yes or no? Yes or no? Because he had made an attempt and he ran away. All right. So, Moses' desire was to deliver his own. It was in his heart. All right. The Bible says, and Moses said, I will follow and turn aside and see what this great sight is. Why the bush is not burnt. And when he turned aside to see what God said unto him, the Bible says, and Moses heard, um, sorry, and God called out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here am I. And the first thing God did was this. What did he say? He said, take, he said, draw not tear that. He said, don't come closer. Until you take off the shoes from thy what feet? What is the shoes from your feet? The shoot from your feet says, if you are going to have an encounter, take away this pattern of thinking that you have. He says, you are going to have an encounter. He said, take away this pattern. He said, take away the shoe of your feet. God says that I don't want this to be paralyzed. Take away the shoes of your feet. Many of you are here. You want to open another business store or expand. You think you have limitations. Let me tell you the truth. Nothing is limiting that your fears. It's within. You just be saying, hey, is this, is that, is that. You will know deep down that I'm just not, it's not, I'm not serious. I've just not made up my mind to do it. You know. A lot of you think you're broke. When your house strength comes, how do you find house strength? The reason why is that when the time of action comes, there's a bigger purpose. So it compels and disciplines you. You focus yourself and you overcome it. If you can gather money for your landlord, why can't you gather money for business? Why can't you gather money for saving, for investment? It's, it's because you've told yourself, I can gather it. So let me, let's keep going. So the Bible says in verse, um, verse 4, it says, and he took it up. Uh, and God began to say to him, in verse 5 rather, I am the Lord God of Abraham, the Lord God of Isaac, the Lord God of Jacob, the Lord Moses, for he was afraid to look upon the Lord. He said, and God said, verse, I'm just rushing. He said, I've seen the affliction of my people, the reason of their tax master. I know their sorrows. I've come to deliver them. See, verse, verse 8 now. He said, I'm come down to deliver them out of the Egyptians, to bring them out of the land unto a good place. A large land that flows will make an honey. Take note how God is describing it. A large land that flows will make an honey. Now, therefore, behold the crowd of Israel, and this, and this, and this. And see verse 11. This is what I'm going to. As soon as God says, I've chosen Moses. Moses knew before God called him, he was chosen. See what Moses said. Moses said, who am I? That 
I should go unto Pharaoh and I should go and bring the children of Israel. Did he feel like this before? He didn't. It was when he had his first failure, his mindset shifted. You didn't feel as if you had business problem. You didn't feel as if you had marital problem. But by the time you began to look at pattern, your mind shifted and your thinking changed and became negative. You know what God began to do? Read the story. There was now a verbal exchange. You know what God was doing? God began to talk to him until his mindset shifted. There was conversation. How did God shift his mindset? This is what God did. God began to do signs and wonders. You know why? Because what miracle does is this. Miracle expands your capacity to believe beyond the logic. That's what miracle does. So God says, throw down your rod. Because they see what I can do. His mind expanded. He said, put your hand on your hand pit. That's why some of you, it's not the thing that God is doing in your life that is important. It's what God is doing in your life, what is making you that is more important. The result is not even as important as who you become in the process of achieving that result. Many of you, as you begin to practice the principles, there will be a lot of changes you have to be because God is interested in developing you as a person. Are you here today? What I'm saying is that Moses knew his call was to deliver Israel, but he could not step out. How did he step out? God began to have conversations with him until his mindset collapsed. That negative mindset collapsed. Then he stepped out. And this teaching, if a very smart person, it's not something you hear once. You will hear it regularly until that thing shifts. It will break down. Because many of you, what you're dealing with it's not what you were told just last year. It's something you, were, you, you grew up with. Sometimes your mother will tell you when you were young and say, we will marry you. And because your heart is fresh as a child, it stays like an imprint there. I'm telling you, you dated this guy. The guy was verbally abusive. And, said, and there were certain words the guy said to you. There were certain things the girl said to you. Now you're single, you're stuck. You buy your first car. You know, I, I remember that something happened in my life. I got a breakthrough. I shared with my uncle. And my uncle's response was this. I will never forget. He said, be careful. He didn't rejoice. So he said, be careful. He said, the way you're going, you're a shooting star. I said, what does shooting star mean? He said, there are people that rise very fast and they fall very fast. The reason why he said so is based on his own experience. When he left that place, that fear entered me. Ah, and I know once the seed is sown, you remember that illustration? It will begin to germinate. I began... That's when I became friends with Proverbs chapter 4. What does it say? The path of a righteous is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter to the perfect day. No matter how what well I'm doing today, I will do better in the future. That's what that means. No matter how well I'm doing today, I will do better in the future. For a child of God, there's no better yesterday. The best days are ahead of me.